Joining me now, Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Rethenbauer. He is a member of the Appropriation and Rules Committees. He's also a member of the China Task Force. Congressman, what the heck is she talking about? Yeah, Dagan, I wish I could just break that down piece by piece because you see there her deflecting in a lot of ways. She can't talk about Joe Biden's record. She's misstating facts. There's no one in the Republican Party right now that wants to do anything with Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare other than strengthen the economy so we can actually meet the obligations we made. And then as far as, far as calling the Make America First agenda extreme, when you're as far left as President Biden in the current Democratic Party, ideas like a secure border, energy independence, school choice, making sure Iran never gets a nuclear weapon, they're so far left that those ideas seem extreme. So they are, in fact, the extremists. And that speech that Joe Biden gave, Dagan, so divisive, so authoritarian, it should really be chilling to anybody that's watching. It seems like, and, and I mean this as a joke, but maybe not a joke, that Biden's handlers are just trying to figure out a way to channel the angry grandpappy energy. You know, he's the guy in the line at the supermarket with the cart who's in a hurry to go nowhere, and he's, like, banging you in the back of the legs with his cart, and they've just tried to figure out a way to channel it. And, by the way, do we have a photo of him standing up last week with that, you know, red backdrop? That needs a Leuven Brothers soundtrack, their famous song, Satan's Real. Well, just two things on that. Uh, Dagan, first off, we're seeing Joe Biden's real personality on display. This is a guy that made threats to people when he was campaigning, saying he was going to take them outside and fight them. Uh, very angry. So this Uncle Joe idea has never been accurate. We're now just seeing that veneer ripped off Biden, and we're seeing who he is, a very angry man. Additionally, everything this team is doing is, is very calculated. The Democrats know, and Biden's handlers know, that they're not going to get any swing voters. Independents are coming to Republicans in droves. So what they have to do to avoid a, a just a horrific beating on, on, on uh, their part in the fall election is they need to increase their voter turnout. That's why Biden is not talking about economic issues. He's talking about the issues that excite his base. For example, uh, January 6th talk, uh, President Trump and the Make America First agenda, they're calculating this to drive up their turnout in the fall election. James Freeman, jump in here on this. Yeah, it's interesting. So it seems to be a strategy maybe saying there's a, there's a ceiling on Biden popularity and uh, makes more sense to attack opponents rather than to sell his agenda, which hasn't really worked out. But I don't understand the point of the last week or so where Day to day, he seems to go back and forth on who he's condemning. It's sort of this broad condemnation of Trump supporters, and then the next day, it's, well, not everybody. And, and I mean, does this have a political purpose, or, or is this uh, just a lack of discipline in his message? Well, two things. The Democrats have a, an identity crisis going on within their own party right now. There's no such thing as blue dog Democrats. Those Democrats have joined our party. For example, Jeff Van Drew in New, New Jersey, great example. So they don't realize that the days of JFK and Bill Clinton, those days are over. They're now controlled by radical leftists, and they are radical in their, their extreme. I can go through their agenda. Conversely, they're having an, an issue accepting what I would describe as a new Republican Party. The days of Mitt Romney are behind us. The days uh, of John Boehner and Paul Ryan, uh, they're gone. This is a new Republican Party. Most members of the GOP conference came in with President Trump at the top of the ticket or when he was in the White House. So this party has shifted. Uh, we are not the party that we were in the 90s and early 2000s. The Democrats need to recognize that, and you're seeing them vacillate on their messaging because they don't understand that what they should be uh, reflecting on their own party, and they certainly don't understand the new Republican Party and our Make America First Again, or Make America Great Again agenda. I want to get your reaction to this. Senator Joe Manchin calling President Biden's student loan handout excessive yesterday, telling reporters, quote, there's a better way to do it. Well, this just weeks after he helped push through the Democrats' massive tax and climate agenda. Congressman. Exactly. 
Exactly, Dagan. And please, as always, Dagan, just call me Guy. But Joe Manchin is not the hero that people in the Republican Party and moderates hold him up to be. He might talk like a moderate, but if you look at his voting record, he votes pretty much in lockstep with the Democrats. And if he wanted to be a hero, he can again do what Jeff Van Drew from New Jersey did and just join the Republican Party and give the Republicans power in the Senate. But him calling out uh, the Biden administration action to forgive the student loan debt, it too is politically calculated because in West Virginia, about 20 percent of those residents went to college. So he knows that his constituents, the guys that are working in coal mines, the guys that are working in the, in the oil and gas industry that didn't go to college, they're now being forced to subsidize the lawyer driving the BMW to work because Joe Biden knows that he needs to give his base, college-educated yuppies, a, a bounce heading into the election. So Manchin recognizes this, but he is no hero. I have a theory, and before we go, James, and I'm curious about what you think of this. And I said this on Gutfeld last night, the, the name calling of you know, talking about the danger of MAGA Republicans, what, it, what, what they're trying to do, and Joe Biden is kind of here, there, and everywhere mentally, but they're trying to make all of these people with real, very serious problems because of the agenda, because of the Biden policies, just turn them into kind of an amorphous blob, rather than people with names and faces and families whose financial struggles are mounting because of these very policies. Like, you remove their, their voice and their pain when you turn them into, well, you know, the MAGA mob, if you will. Yeah, it's disgraceful. It's uh, uh, and really the opposite of what Joe Biden promised to be as a candidate, the, the uniter, uh, the healer. Uh, I, I think it is especially dangerous in this day and age when we look at the abuses of the FBI to have a, a large group of Americans designated by the head of our government as uh, as unacceptable, despicable. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't say deplorable, but that's kind of the, the message uh, he's giving. And I, I also, I have to agree with the congressman that, that Joe Manchin uh, criticism of this outrageous transfer of debt by the president was so mild. Uh, th this was never authorized by the Congress. Uh, it, it really puts the lie, again, to that Biden speech uh, at Philadelphia at Independence Hall suggesting he's the defender of limited constitutional governance. Uh, this is the opposite of that. And so I think Manchin, if anything, has, has dignified it by calling it excessive. I mean, it shouldn't happen at all, and excessive doesn't begin to mm -hmm. describe it. Congressman, final word to you before we go. Yeah, well said. And the reason why Biden is on the stage condemning 75 million Americans that supported President Trump is because he can't talk about the reduction of crime. Crime is on the rise. He can't talk about success on the southern border. It's an absolute crisis down there. He can't talk about economic success. We're, heading, we're in a recession, heading into stagnation and more inflation. He can't talk about wins on the international stage because you have Russia on, on the march in Ukraine and aggressive China. So he has to attack Republicans. He can't talk about his own achievements. Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, thank you so much. Great to see you.